Hey, welcome back to D-Lab, everybody. I have another Johnson 500 on the bench. This one has a very unique problem. When I fired it up, I noticed that the grid was acting strange. I had grid current when I shouldn't have. The VFO is not turning off. You can go from standby to zero, and the VFO continues to run. Let me show you the symptoms. All right, I'll do my best to show you what's going on. We're on the 40 meter band at 7.295 megahertz. I am in standby, but if you look, we got a signal on this receiver. And I have grid current. If I go to zero, my grid current goes up, but nothing changes. The VFO continues to run. Yes, I've already tried to adjust the keyer. It does nothing. I checked the keyer tube, and it's fine. There's something internally wrong with the 500, and I think I know what it is. All right, I'm still connected to pin seven of the 12AU7, which is the keyer tube in the Johnson 500, according to the manual. When I'm in standby position, that voltage should be negative 45 volts. You can see we're only at negative 20. When I go to zero, it's supposed to ground that pin, which activates the VFO. We're getting close to zero. But the thing that's concerning is we're not getting the negative 45, and I believe I know what's causing it. So I'm monitoring on the tapped bias resistor, and they're specifying approximately negative 45 volts on that tap. That tap actually feeds pin 7 of the 12AU7 through a 22K resistor. So somewhere between that tap and that resistor, we're losing 30 volts. All right, I am measuring at the point of the negative 45 volt bias feed that's coming into the 22K resistor, and that's R112 that goes to pin 7 of the 12AU7 tube. Monitoring at that point, I am seeing 385 ohms, and I believe that is why the negative 45 volts is not reaching pin 7. It's being shunted to ground. So looking at the schematic, I see that there is a 005 microfarad disc cap called C, I believe it's 108, going to ground. I'll show you that on the schematic. But I believe that that disc cap is shorted, or close to short, and it's pulling my negative bias down. Here's a schematic for your reference. I'm measuring right here at this point and seeing 385 ohms to ground. Normally the negative 45 should come up through the 22K and hit pin 7. But we have 385 ohms pulling that voltage low. So if you go over here, there is that 005 cap. I'll zoom in here so you can see a close up of where I'm working in. But I believe that this cap is bad. Alright, right there is the disc cap. And it's going to one side of the 22K resistor to ground. The other funny thing I noticed was even the keyer pot has low resistance on this lead, which it should not. And it's also sharing that same cap. So I'm going to get that out of there and we'll see if the problem clears. Okay, I clipped the ground side of that disc cap, thinking the fault clear made no difference. So there is my 386 ohms has not budged. I'm in standby and there's zero. You can see there's a little bit of change, but something is generating that 385 ohms, and it doesn't show up in the schematic. All right, so at this point, guys, I'm kind of in a high-speed hold. I need to sit back and think about this problem. It's a real stumper. I have attached a chart that shows the information from the Johnson Manual for Resistance and Voltages when they designed the unit and you can see what I measured. Okay, I may have just discovered why the keying circuit is not working on the 500. These two caps, the C131 and C136, the schematic shows these as 0.22 microfarad caps. These are 33 microfarad caps, and they're feeding pin 7 of the keyer, which is not operating. So we're going to put that back to stock. All right, so I restored the values of C131 and 136 back to the specification in the Johnson schematic, and guess what? 
the grid is normal again. So that over capacitance was screwing up the keyer circuit. Thank God. So here we go again, going down that rabbit hole as they say. I spent needless hours troubleshooting a problem that was generated by a maintenance error or a modification in the past. So after inspecting the radio and seeing all the modifications that I did, especially in the audio section, I'm assuming this was also a modification to the radio. Remember, it's okay to modify your radio if you're going to keep it. But when you send that down the road and somebody else has problems, it's going to cause them a lot of heartache and unnecessary expense. So I believe that the Johnson engineers had a really good handle on their designs. That's why when I see these problems, I always try to return the transmitter to stock because I knew it worked back then. After all, their creations are 60 years old and still going.